of someone have you ever cared? Hello again. I'm Dr. Hung Vu and our show is America's Healthcare Crisis. The topic of discussion for our program tonight is physical fitness and health. Before the Industrial Revolution, when the basic infrastructure of the economy was agriculture, life was much simpler and in some ways much healthier than the way we're living today. In those days, people worked in the field, ate a healthy diet, was exposed to a lot of sunshine and fresh air, and especially had a lot of physical activity, which were all the essential elements of good health. Then the revolution in industry, manufacturing, and so forth, drew a lot of people into the cities where they work in polluted factories, live in cramped quarters, and developed unhealthful habits, such as smoking, drinking alcohol, and eating high processed uh, and high fat diet. And those changes have created a number of ailments that uh, plague our society nowadays. And then within the last two or three decades, the fitness movement started with the awareness that maybe we should go back to the old ways of living and preserving our health. Especially in California, where living in the outdoor has been popular people began to jog, bike, hike, ski, and work out in the gyms. And that, from that point on, the movement has gained momentum and developed into a industry with health spas develop, development, manufacturing of different ex exercise equipment, and books and seminars and so forth. To discuss the topic of fitness and health, I have with me tonight two excellent speakers, and I would like to introduce them now. Our first speaker is March Shavli. Hi, March. Hi. Nice having you tonight. Nice to be here. How are you? I'm OK. <laughs> uh, March is a uh, PE instructor, and she, she specializes in uh, a field called Adapted Physical Education um, at Foothill College, is that it? I also teach for West Valley and do okay. some private work, too. But, and you have you know. been doing it for a while? About a few years, okay. yes. Okay. 30 years or so? <laughs> Over 30 years, but not all adapted PE. Yeah. Welcome uh -huh. to our show. Thank you. And our second speaker is uh, Steve Tweston. Steve is a registered nurse who is working at the present time at the uh, Good Samaritan Health System. But before becoming a nurse, he also was a PE instructor. That's correct. And he had a, a master degree in physical education, is that it? Exercise physiology. Oh, okay. And Steve is also a uh, triathlete right. who has participated in a number of uh, tri triathlon uh, events. That's correct. So I'm very glad to have you here tonight. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Great. So, Marge, why don't you tell us uh, what you do and just sort of introduce uh, to the audience uh, the uh, concept of uh, adapted PE. Okay. Adapted physical education is uh, creating a, an atmosphere for people who couldn't necessarily make it in a regular PE class, if you mm -hmm. want to look at it that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, we work with doctors. The doctor will give the, the student uh, suggestions of what they should do. They may have been to a physical therapist. And in our classes, they, we individualize the program for them so that uh, everybody may be doing the same exercise but with modifications depending mm. on what their disability is. I see. And we have able-bodied students in our classes. They don't, you don't have mm -hmm. to be disabled to take our classes. I see. Um, I'm teaching for um, Foothill College. I also, I said I taught for West Valley. I do some private uh, classes mm -hmm. and I ha do work with students individually too. Yeah. I've worked with um, over the 30 years I've worked in all with all ages from nursery school all the way up mm -hmm. to at one time I said I had classes from students from 3 to 103. Oh yeah. really? Yeah. <laughs> I really <laughs> did. Been three years old? Mm -hmm. I see. <laughs> and actually you had uh, students who had uh, very significant uh, disabilities from Parkinson's disease and all sort of uh, genetic conditions also? Isn't yes, it? I, I'm currently teaching three classes that have almost 
almost everyone in the class has Parkinson's. Mm. Uh, I'm on the board of directors for the Peninsula Parkinson's support groups oh, and I'm the coordinator of mm -hmm. the exercise programs and we're developing more classes yeah. for, for people with Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. Because you have Parkinson's, you don't have to take a special class, but sometimes mm -hmm. if you're in a class specifically uh, for Parkinson's, we can direct things, mm. uh, address things for, for a person I that uh, may have speech problem or a, a gait problem. Yeah. And everybody in the class has the same problem. Other times people don't want to be in a class where everybody <laughs> has the same thing. They'd much I rather, see. what we were talking Makes about earlier, yeah. rather be with mm -hmm. everybody else. Yeah. And, uh, what was that person, 103, uh, what did he have or she have? Oh, that was in a convalescent home, oh, and I, I have no idea what the disability was. <laughs> that's that's really yeah. marvelous. I had a teacher that was 102. Oh, I, really? Mm -hmm. And her husband was, too. Uh -huh. <laughs> what, uh, what have been the most uh, remarkable improvement in the health uh, that you could attribute it to the lesson that they took that you, you, know, that you mm. remember? That, that's that's very difficult to say. Uh, this last quarter, I always have my students do a self-evaluation. Mm -hmm. And this last quarter, we've been working on balance activities in mm -hmm. one of the classes at a senior center. And mm -hmm. I, those students aren't severely disabled, but mm -hmm. they have a variety of um, things mm -hmm. that slow them down. And mm -hmm. many of them had balance problems. So I had been mm -hmm. working on that. and. When we tested it, tested them at the end, over half the student, more than half the students had improved in their balance, oh, really? and many of them were very surprised. And that I, I was, you know, I was very pleased with. How are the that. tremor in uh, in Parkinson? Have, have you had any reduction of the, the tremor? that you remember? I think that depends on their medication a mm. lot. Uh, so different things affect different people different uh -huh. ways, and if their meds are on, it works, and if it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, what we try and do is increase the flexibility, mm -hmm. and I, I work a lot on their body awareness mm -hmm. to help them. Um, there is a postural problem that, that comes with mm -hmm. Parkinson's, I and we, I tend to work mm -hmm. with the posture, work on flexibility, trying to get more, mm -hmm. they just get very rigid. And, yeah. um, Steve, you've been doing how many triathlon events now? A I've dozen? lost count of the triathlons. Every time? I've lost count. I've done, oh, really? Yeah. Two but you told me that you, you have run like 30, 30 marathons? 30 or 30, two or three marathons. Oh, really? Yes. That's marvelous. It's my passion. <laughs> <laughs> you look very fit. Well, I guess I am fitter than some, but not as fit as others. I understand that you came from a family that has a tradition of uh, doing exercise, isn't it? Well, I guess it could be called a tradition. I grew up watching my mother exercise in the mornings mm -hmm. to the Jack Lane program. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know if you remember back in the 50s, he mm -hmm. had his TV show and the, the white dog or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's bigger than ever now, you know. Oh, yeah, I heard he's <laughs> written a new book or something. Yeah. So that's, I guess, kind of what triggered something in my brain. I thought yeah. about my mom doing that. Mm -hmm. And she and my dad, who are both in their 70s, still go work out at the YMCA near their house three times mm -hmm. a week. They mm -hmm. swim and work out on the weights a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they're very active still. Mm -hmm. So the triathlons were what? Swimming? swimming, cycling, and running. Oh, I see. And it ranges all distances, but the one that I think most people are familiar with is the Ironman, which is the big race in Hawaii. Mm. And that's a 2.4-mile two swim, 112-mile bike, and then you finish all that with a 26.2-mile run. Oh, my God. So that's a... And you did all that. It's a fun day. <laughs> I'm very impressed. That's, that's great. You know, actually, the reason I ask you that is because, um, in a sense, I think you're probably lucky to have been born into that environment of you know, very healthful habits. Uh, a lot of other people are not, do not have that, that opportunity to develop their interest in, in the physical fitness. For example, myself, I was never very active at all you know, because uh, for a uh, certain psychological reason, you know, I, when I was in Vietnam, you know, I was always, uh, I w always, always felt that I was very small and I could not, you know, achieve any kind of uh, athletic endeavors. But again, you know, I, I developed uh, some of the um, uh, physical activity um, habits very late, like, you know, a dozen years ago, I started to ski and things like that. I really yes. enjoyed it very much because there's a very, very big difference between competing and just doing it for the fun yes, of it, you know? That's true. And, I uh, think people 
too often get into their mind that if they have to do a triathlon or they have to do a marathon, mm -hmm. and it's not true. You just have to be an active person mm -hmm. to find mm -hmm. good health. It doesn't have to be mm -hmm. organized mm -hmm. swimming meets or tennis matches or anything like that, yeah. but to just go play tennis or go for play some golf or go for a walk. Yeah, We have beautiful parks in, in this mm -hmm. area that are just waiting for people to walk in them. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. Do you do anything in particular on a regular basis? Or any physical I, exercise? I walk and uh, start playing tennis again a little bit mm -hmm. and do mm -hmm. some exercises just for me. Mm -hmm. I do exercise in all my classes, but it's mm -hmm. not, not necessarily yeah. what I need. <laughs> You mentioned that you also teach Tai Chi or yoga or something like that. No, no? Uh, no. I I've done some acupressure, but I ha and I, oh, I have see. taken some Tai Chi classes mm -hmm. and I introduce it in my classses mm -hmm. and I've t done a little bit with Qigong. So I mm -hmm. introduce it to the classes and often we'll bring in a speaker or guest speaker oh, so that they get a chance mm -hmm. to see what it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's that's great. You look marvelous too. I mean, you know, <laughs> both of you are really. Examples of good health, you know, exuding, uh, in, in, you know, I mean, shiny health. That's great. Um, tell us, I mean, have you ever been sick or anything significant uh, with all these physical activities that you do? No, not really. Other than one time, I foolishly didn't rest when my body was telling me to, and I got mm -hmm. pretty sick. Oh, but I that see. was stupidity and mind over matter versus listening to what my <laughs> my legs and my arms what, were telling me. What happened? I got pneumonia. I, I'd run a marathon and a, a, I was living in Saudi Arabia at the time and ran this marathon and did quite well over there mm -hmm. and just was high on placing third in, in this uh, international race and just mm -hmm. wouldn't believe that I was tired. I had <laughs> mm -hmm. run the best I'd run in years and just decided mm. I'm, I'm Superman. And my body yeah, told me different. <laughs> that's interesting what you're saying because um, I have taken care of a number of patients who did just that. They overdid mm -hmm. and injured themselves, you know. So that is the only downside of physical activity that I, I could see is that when people are not uh, tuned into being sensitive to their body, you know, they overdo mm -hmm. yes. and they get hyped up, you know, by all those gurus or <laughs> those, you know, I mean, uh, crash course where they can, you know, gain uh, great uh, physical abilities, and they they injure themselves. You know, they can have pretty significant uh, problems. With, you know, I have seen young people yes. who have uh, mm -hmm. torn ligaments uh, in the knees, and you know, sprained mm -hmm. ankles, very significant. You know, so you have something to say about it because you teach. Not, a I was going to say the reverse of that too. You, people say that I can't do it because I'm old or I uh -huh. can't do it because I uh -huh. have this disability and it's mm -hmm. not true. Right. Uh, they found that people who do exercise do improve mm -hmm. and you see the greatest uh, growth or the best uh, um, performances out of people that have have never done anything before yes. because there's so much room to improve yeah. and that's it's yeah. like teaching somebody swimming that they can right. and now they <laughs> they can't right. and now mm -hmm. they can it's so mm -hmm. so exciting and uh, one of the points with someone that has a disability or has arthritis for example or something where they can't get up and move very much mm -hmm. if they look at they they're supposed to do 30 you hear I've got to do 30 minutes of exercise right. mm -hmm. you don't have to do it all at once right right if you do mm -hmm. it 30 times one minute Mm -hmm. That's and then try and maybe make it a minute and a half so you don't have to do it 30 times right, and then right. make it two minutes and just yeah. very very gradually build up and you can see a significance. Yeah. I have people in my classes that are lifting weights that never never could have before yeah. when they started yeah. but we start off the weight of your arm and then you add a little bit of something mm -hmm. and then you add a little bit more. Yeah, yeah I think the, the coaching part is really very important because I I, I am concerned about the um, aspect of over -com commercialization, commercialization of the the fitness movement. You know, a lot of people are uh, drawn into doing too fast, too uh, too much, mm -hmm. and sometimes that that is not so good. You know, I mean, do you have any particular uh, book or uh, any uh, material that you're aware of that are good in terms of getting people into starting up? When they, um, well, the books I, I always used was uh, Dr. Ken Cooper's books on aerobics, mm. and he's got a series of them out. And mm -hmm. at one point, I believe his wife wrote one specifically for women and the problem that women have mm. when they're starting an exercise program. Yeah. But Dr. Cooper 
keeps things fairly basic and real simple for people. Mm -hmm. And like you were saying, it's, he starts people out very slowly mm -hmm. and just stair steps them up gradually so they're mm -hmm. not overdoing it. Yeah. And he doesn't, he's not a, a strong believer in the crazy things that I do of going out mm -hmm. and running marathons and mm -hmm. things like yeah. that. His whole aspect is just be active and be fit mm -hmm. and not have to go out there and compete or do anything that's right. strenuous. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, it's certainly so scary to, uh, to read in the news uh, those, you know, basketball uh, superstars who drop yeah, that on a basketball court. Yes. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's very disturbing, you know. Mm -hmm. So one has to be very careful. I, I, I'm saying that because I, I have learned from my own experience that um, sometimes it can really be um, uh, counterproductive you know, to do something that you overdo. Usually when I get home, I, when I'm, I feel very tired, uh, the first thing I would do is to relax first, you know, to just, you know, to wind up or, or wind down actually. Yes. And then take a short walk or something. And then I slowly, after maybe, you know, even 15, 10, 20 minutes, I begin to jog, you know, slowly and, and mm -hmm. you know, speed up. And then that way, you know, I, I did not, uh, have not felt the, um, the effect of some time, you know, just uh, don't have enough rest. And then uh, you uh, overstrain your body, you know, it can be, you know. Uh, well, I think one of the problems that people have nowadays is time is so short for everybody. Yeah. Time is of the essence. Mm -hmm. And we don't spend enough time, enough quality time warming up. Mm -hmm. If you go to the symphony, mm -hmm. the musicians warm up before the, the symphony. If you <laughs> go to a sporting event, you see the pro players warming up before right. the real event right. starts. Right but your average everyday exerciser tends to walk into the gym or walk on the tennis court, mm -hmm. do two minutes of stretching, maybe, yeah. And, yeah. and maybe it's most likely it's done incorrectly, yeah. and then they're out there going full force. Mm -hmm. And that's when a lot of problems will occur. Yeah. If people would take the time and ride their bicycle to the tennis court or, yeah. or as you say, walk for five, 10, 15 mm -hmm. minutes and then go into their jog, yeah. be a lot healthier for them. That, that's very true, you know, because uh, Again, you know, I mean, sometimes we can uh, be compulsive about it, you know, like develop a compulsive habit that we, I have to do it, otherwise I won't be feeling good, you know, That's sometimes right. you, you overdo. Mm -hmm. um, um, you have mentioned something that was amazing to me. We, we talked about a little bit about, about the um, physiology of athletes. And you said that, you know, yourself, your normal pulse rate is like 50, and then it can raise up to 180 or 200, something like that? Well, when I'm exercising, I could exercise at 180. Not for long, but that's where it can be. That is to me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the way the human heart works. When you that's have to amazing. supply oxygen and fuel mm -hmm. to the muscles, the pump is a supplier, yeah. so it just pumps yeah. faster and harder. Because most of the workers, you know, I, uh, I do physical exam on, you know, in the office, they start out with heart rate about 75, 80, and then after two minutes of you know uh, jogging in place, it goes up to 90, 95, and they start to faint. You know, right. I mean that's that's very scary. You know, and was, most people are not fit, and uh, and you you I, I have noticed also that you ha you are very energy efficient. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about you know your your. Uh, dietary or uh, nutritional habit because I'm fascinated by it. <laughs> well, I don't know if my <laughs> dietary and nutritional habits are that great, but uh -huh. I tend to follow a, a low fat diet uh -huh. and eat mostly grains or breads and cereals, uh -huh. fruits and vegetables, uh -huh. occasionally chicken or fish, uh -huh. and very, very rarely I'll eat meat. Uh -huh. But I just feel better when I eat a, a lower fat diet and, and uh -huh. higher complex carbohydrates. Uh -huh. Uh, with the my daily activities, though, I pretty much burn everything that I put into the system, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. system being my body, mm -hmm. and so I just burn a lot of calories. Well, you bike to work and everything. Yeah, else. I I am mm -hmm. fanatical about it. So. <laughs> and your fat caliper is like seven, eight percent. Uh, my body fat is below ten percent. Yes. Compared compared to an average of eighteen. Eighteen to twenty right. for the average man. That's, that's marvelous. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And. It's important, I think one of the things uh, that the media is marketing right now is low fat. Mm -hmm. uh, just because something is low fat or non-fat doesn't mean it is zero calories. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And the way your sure. body gains or loses weight is by burning more calories than you take in will mm -hmm. cause you to lose weight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if all those calories are no-fat calories, if you still exactly. take too much in, yeah. you're going to gain weight. Yeah. So one has to still be conscientious of the number of calories mm -hmm. they're consuming. Actually, soda pop is one of the big culprits of uh, calorie consumption, yes. isn't it? Because if you drink, you know, a couple of liters of uh, Coke or you know Pepsi every day, you know, you can you can get fat too. Well, it changed from Coke. Now you drink all these water, all the fancy, fancy waters, water. but you look at how many calories are in those. Sometimes those, those are have really lots high. of calories, mm -hmm. and uh, that's one of the things. There's many hidden calories that people don't realize. Yeah, and mm -hmm. don't think about it. But it's a it's a matter of just changing your lifestyle a little bit, and mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be dramatic. You don't have to become mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah. It's just to just be conscientious of what's going on. You know, actually, it's it's very interesting what you say about habits. You know, because I personally, for a very long time, was not nearly as active as I am now, and it's just a habit. You know, I mean, it's uh, but one at one point when I could begin to feel the difference. I mean, there's just no way I could go back to the old ways. You know, what I mean, mm -hmm. and, I mean after, after you see, you have to the slowly change bad habits into good ones. But at a certain point when you realize the benefits of good habits, then you, you just cannot turn the clock back. Yes. You know? It's hard to establish habits. I read somewhere that it takes 12 to 15 weeks to establish a habit. Mm -hmm. And that's a long time if you're not having much fun when you're out on your walk or your bike ride and your mm -hmm. bottom sore from the bike seat and mm -hmm. uh, you're getting blisters from your hiking boots. but. Mm -hmm. If you give it and stick with it for 12 to 15 weeks, then mm -hmm. you're going to cross that threshold where it will be yeah. more comfortable for you and you'll enjoy mm -hmm. it. But the key is to do it slowly and enjoy it instead of... Uh, right. Find something through. you like to do. That's you don't, important, yeah, too. Yeah, you don't Very have important. to go. Yeah. If you don't like to run, for heaven's sake, run. don't run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's so many things out there. Mm -hmm. California is a, mm -hmm. a wonderful place. You can do so many yeah. different things. Tennis and yeah. walking and square dancing and ballroom dancing and... Mm -hmm. all sorts of activities and it doesn't have too many people think it has to be something that's organized and it really doesn't mm -hmm. have to be even mm -hmm. gardening and gardening, washing your car Wa sure. cleaning the exactly. house those are all yeah. they burn some calories I always mm -hmm. kid people about doing aerobic vacuuming and that's mm -hmm. really yeah. getting to vacuuming your house with <laughs> some just enthusiasm. Be sure you keep your back tight. <laughs> that's right watch your posture. <laughs> mm -hmm. Actually yeah, you know it is very true because you can be very creative about how to do it you know like the main um, uh, uh, obstacle to doing routine exercise is, is time. If people are pressured for time, you yes. know, they get up, the, get up in the morning, jump out of the shower and, you know, get dressed quickly and jump to the car and, and, and speed up in the highway and they don't have any time. And yet I realized that there are different ways you can work around, you know, your uh, daily activity to to inject small doses of uh, things so, that are very healthy. Mm -hmm. For example, I'm, I'm, you know, squeezing a, a uh, what do you call it, the putty yeah, mm -hmm. uh, like therapy. therapy. Mm -hmm. When I watch TV, you know, and those things are, it doesn't cost Now start anything. doing some stretching the other way. Yeah. You're going to get all, <laughs> you got to get this. Whatever, you know. So I, I You're going to get like this. Yeah. But there's a number of exercises that one can do in a car. Mm -hmm. You can do isometric exercises if you're stuck in traffic or mm -hmm. you come to a red light, you can do mm -hmm. some exercises there. Yeah. And it may sound bizarre or, or weird, but we have to do that, I think, or our bodies are just going to continue to sure, deteriorate. Sure. And little things help. Mm -hmm. I would think so. You know, I, I really think that uh, it's just a mental attitude. Once we think about it and we put it as a priority in our lives, you know, just start doing it. You know, anything right. we do would be good. And uh, you know, I I just uh, remember, you know, how much I sleep better and you know eat better, and my, my the quality of my life just improved enormously. Yeah. You know, with uh, those. Uh, I tell us, that tell my students some of them that are one of our exercises just to get up and down out of a chair and mm -hmm. how to do it properly but it's to strengthen their their mm -hmm. legs and I always I've got a few I say okay now before you eat you're in a hard chair you've got a table in front of you now right. you've got to stand up and sit down mm -hmm. at least three times and then if you yeah. do it then, sure. and then so they're all set up at mm -hmm. least three times a day to do that exercise mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah actually I, I wish that there would be more um, shows or seminars that include just normal healthy people like you are instead of you know a big commercialized kind of uh, 
seminars uh, featuring gurus, you know, because that is a big hype, and I think that people flop very easily after, you know, a short kind of uh, excitement. Yes. Whereas I, I, I really think that there's a, a, a lack of uh, shows that feature just regular people mm -hmm. doing things, you know, I mean, in a, a, a regular but uh, normal fashion, you know, it doesn't have to be all, you know, hyped up in Hollywood eyes, you know. So. Um, yeah, there's, there's a number of just regular, normal people. All you have to do is go out to some of the county parks and watch, yeah. and all shapes and sizes, all ages, mm -hmm. and everybody's out there just doing their thing, and it seems like they're all having pretty much fun. Yeah, uh, especially in California. Yeah, I think yeah. there's, you know, there's a uh, few excuses not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You into uh, open class pretty soon in, uh, next week? Maybe? No, we don't start until we just. Uh, start our break, so we don't start for another four weeks. So oh, really? We mm -hmm. had a big talk with all the students. You know, you got about five or six weeks. How's nothing. The, en the enrollment? So it's it's uh, going strong, pretty good. Well, it, I hope so. I hope yeah. it's going strong. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, uh, so. I have one student that that uh, when she and her husband started taking the class, she neither of them really liked exercise, but they knew they. He had Parkinson's and mm -hmm. they knew that this was something they really ought to be doing. Yeah. And she wanted to get get her routine going right. and now she's just so excited about how how good she's feeling and yeah. she was going to make sure she kept up during the six weeks she bought I forget what she had but she had some kind of routine that she was going to mm -hmm. be doing and mm -hmm. it was nice to hear that yeah. great I think we're running out of time uh, since we the time passes very by very quickly when uh, you enjoy doing something I really uh, appreciate your presence here tonight and uh, it's great to, I mean, just, I, I don't think we have to say very much. Just the way you look on camera, you know, <laughs> would give the credibility to the show. <laughs> and I, I really uh, appreciate your help. May I ask how old you are? I have to stop thinking. I'm 57, I think. Oh, jeez. You look great. You look <laughs> absolutely you. marvelous. You. And so do you. You can ask. Steve. Well, I tell you the other thing. <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Right? No, the I problem I have is when you check that little list and all of a sudden you're in the next category. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we have I've been talking about physical fitness and health. Um, our uh, speakers here, March Shively and uh, Steve Tweston, have given uh, very insightful uh, education into the subject. And uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to, opportunity to announce that uh, uh, our show is, has been accepted to be aired in other access stations in the Bay Area. So I'd like to take this opportunity to publi publicly thank the uh, staff at the Access Los Altos and my very loyal uh, production crew for all the help they have uh, given us for the show to grow. And uh, until next time, I'm Dr. Hung Vu. Our show is America's Healthcare Crisis. Thank you for watching. Good night. someone have you ever shared do you need someone to always be there when you feel lonesome and deep in despair do you need someone to dry up your tears do you need someone 